game tonight, Ray Perone, Wally Rutecki, and Jim Haney. Buffalo, dressed in their road blue uniforms with white trim. And Iona, of course, the home whites, maroon and gold. And again, the winner of this game will go on to the semifinals and will meet either Ohio or East Tennessee State. We'll be following that game and giving you scores as the evening goes along. It's going to be Glover against Michael Watt. And the quarterfinal round is underway. The opening tip is controlled by Buffalo from right to left, quickly down that right wing. Now they pass in the corner, and we had a turnover right away against the Bulls stepping on the end line as Dave Barnett apparently got the sneaker on the line, so Iona gets the ball just seven seconds in. Gales from left to right as Scott Machado will bring up, and Buffalo opening up in a man-to-man. -man. Machado straight down the middle of the court, head of the arc. Aleo comes way out for the ball, dribbles to his left now on the weave to Armand, ends up on the right key, goes behind the arc to Dwight, dribbles further, can't penetrate the paint. Now back to Machado up top. 13 on the shot clock. Pick waiting by Glover. Instead, Machado to Glover. Underneath to Aleo Rodriguez, who lays it in. That's what makes Iona so tough. Most post guys would have got the charge there, what Glover did. Great pass by Michael Glover. Now we run the other way. Mulkey with the ball along the right sideline in front of the Iona bench. Near turnover. Machado got his hand on the ball, but it's able to be recovered by Robinson. Now the steal made by Aleo Rodriguez. Ahead to Armand. Goes up strong to the basket, and Sean is fouled. On a setup by Scott Machado, we're going to get our first free throws of the evening, and the freshman Sean Amon with Iona leading 2-0. Well, Reggie Witherspoon jumping off the bench and yelling at his crew early here, and it's because Iona has now done in the first minute of the game what they do best, get the ball inside to Glover and get out on the break. Armand with the free throw, it is up and good. Sean during the regular season, 65% from the line, a 3-0 Quick start for Iona. Rodriguez with a bucket. Armand with a free throw. The foul was called against Ryan Mulkey. The second one by Armand. Good. Make it 4 0 in favor of the Gales. Pressure in the backcourt. Armand with the double team. Now they're able to get it across, not across the midcourt line yet. Filson, he's got two to spare. Goes backwards with the ball. And that should have been a shot clock violation. Instead, the steal by Machado. Faking a pass will drive himself. No. Rebound by Glover, who was pushed out of bounds. And it still will be Iona Ball. That's the second steal the Gales have come up with. And quite frankly, that was after the 10-second clock would have expired. It should have been a violation. Yeah, Mitchell Watt almost made them commit the 10-second call, but a good block by Watt at the other end. Iona inbounds in the lane of Leo Rodriguez. The soft touch with the left hand make it 6 nothing on a nice setup by Rashawn Dwight. Second basket by Rodriguez. Now fills in a long two from the right wing. And Zach fills in finally getting Buffalo on the board. A minute and a half in, it is six to two, Iona. That's the negative in the gamble. When you make teams play quick and press the way Iona is right now, you'll give up some open looks. Michael Glover from high post to low, driving down low, and it's called for steps. The travel against Michael Glover, the first turnover against Iona. I feel like Glover's at his best, Gary, when he makes that secondary move. Teams have him scattered. They know he likes to put it on the deck and go right from the high post. Brian Mulkey in the backcourt, lead pass up ahead to Barnett. Barnett. Down low to Robinson. Work it left. Mulkey. 2 3 zone now for the Gales. Mulkey left of the key. Coming out is Watt. Works it on the right side to Barnett. Now to Robinson. Left side. Mulkey. Three ball. Good. So five in a row for UB. And it's a one point Iona lead. Mulkey, the second leading scorer on this team. And they got to know where he is on the perimeter. Machado, quick double team, down low to Aleo Rodriguez, pass in the corner to Dwight, driving in the lane, the runner with the right hand, back rim, no good, follow-up wouldn't go by Dwight, had two opportunities, now we got a tie-up on the rebound, Aleo Rodriguez got a piece of Dave Barnett, and on the alternate arrow, it will be Iona Ball. So the Gales jumped out 6-0, but Buffalo coming back with five points of their own, just under 18 minutes to play, Dwight behind the basket, looking, looking, Rashawn loops on the point, now to Machado. Right corner, Dwight passes up the three. Right baseline drive, penetrates off the glass and in by Rashawn Dwight. Good shot fake that time, but an even better drive baseline. Now Mulkey, across the midcourt line with a pass to Fills and return to Mulkey, carries on the right wing. Backs up, three ball, Mulkey is good. His second of the game, and Buffalo has tied the game at 8-8. Eight -eight. Here's Machado. Carries to the right key, backs up. He's got Armand to his left, Dwight to his right, 
Glover and Rodriguez down underneath. Almost three minutes in, 8-8, eight, eight, Iona and the University of Buffalo. Glover in front of the Buffalo bench. Glover puts it on the floor, drives quick double team, and then the turnover, steal by Filzen. Armand scrambling to get back. Here comes Buffalo, Filzen with the ball, left of the key. Mulkey now up top to Watt. Watt, one dribble, decides a 19-footer, in and out, straight on. Glover with his first rebound, outlet goes to Machado. Right wing, Armand, three, no, long rebound. Rodriguez tries to run it down, but could not. And Aleo ends up between two players on the Buffalo bench. You know, that was a quick shot on offense, but if I'm Tim Kloos, I'm not disappointed in that shot by Sean Armand. He plays his best basketball when he gets some early looks, especially when his feet are set in transition. Now, Juwan Austin and Javon McCray, the fine freshman off the bench, 8-8 tie, in for Buffalo. Mulkey feeds underneath McCray, beating Rodriguez with the left hand, and he scores. Well, you see why McCray led the other Mac in offensive field goal percentage, because he takes good shots like that inside. Buffalo with their first lead. It's 10-8 after Iona jumped out 6-0. Now backdoor play. Glover goes up strong. No, he got bumped from behind by Austin. No foul, and we go the other way, led by Mulkey. Mulkey, bad pass. Taken by Aleo Rodriguez for Iona. Up ahead, Machado. Mulkey is back. Machado will lose him, and it's going to be an offensive goal ten as the shot by Machado will count for two. That ties the game. Good job by Machado on the break that time, eluding the defender with the dribble, and then getting it up on the backboard quick. Aleo Rodriguez out for Iona after four points. Chris Pelcher, a little bit bothered by the flu in the game for the Gales as Brian Mulkey, the point guard for Buffalo, will bring up just under 16 minutes to go first half. We're even at 10-10. Austin along the right fills in against Iona's 2-3 zone. High post, it goes to McCray. McCray spins, nice shovel pass underneath, but it's bobbled and taken off by Jamel Jenkins just in the game for Iona. Lead to Dwight, down the lane, gives to Machado. Machado, great pass out to Jenkins for three, good. There's always an Iona guard at the top of the key. That's Tim Kloos' rule. Machado didn't even know who was there. He just delivered the ball. And the Gales have regained the lead now at 13 to 10. Four and a half gone by. Austin fires left to Mulkey. Mulkey, top of the key, McCray. Driving on Pelcher, beat him. The shot, no good, and Pelcher grabs the rebound. Everything right by McCray there, but he couldn't finish the deal. Now Machado carries to the top of the paint. Spinning goes on. The runner was partially blocked. Rebound tipped to the corner. Will go out of bounds and will belong to Buffalo when we come back. Our first media timeout, 15.01 to go in the first half. And a good start for both teams now. Iona leading Buffalo 13 to 10. It'll be quarterfinal action of the College Insider Tournament continuing in just a moment. Holiday Inn Selects is downtown Stanford is the official hotel sponsor of the Iona Gales. Whether just visiting Iona or coming to cheer on the maroon and gold, the Holiday Inn features recently renovated guest rooms and suites that reflect a crisp, contemporary design of an urban downtown getaway. Each room features high-speed internet and wireless connectivity, in addition to access to a health and fitness center, indoor pool, business center, and 700 bar and grill, a casual dining atmosphere with a pub-style cuisine. The Holiday Inn Select Downtown Stanford is conveniently located at 700 East Main Street in downtown Stanford, just off exit 8 of I-95. Holiday Inn Select Downtown Stanford is also accessible by Metro North's New Haven line. For more information or to make a reservation, call 203-358-8400. Having a party? Well, smart shoppers know the name Shannon Beverages of New Rochelle. Shannon proudly carries the largest selection of domestic imported and craft brewed beer in Westchester. All your favorite brands of soda and ice, too. Stock up now. Our discount prices can't be beat. Party balls. And for your convenience, quarter kegs and half kegs are always available. Remember, for discount beer and soda, all the top brands, domestic and imported, Shannon Beverages, just a quarter mile south of Iona at 437 North Avenue in New Rochelle. Call 632-1115. That's 632-1115. Shannon Beverages. Back here in New Rochelle, New York, Vin Parisi alongside Gary Stanley on icgales.com. And we are in the CIT action here. Buffalo at Iona. Gales off to the early lead, 13-10. We're five minutes into this basketball game. Buffalo ball, Trinity Fields, who had a career-high 16 points at Valparaiso, makes his appearance into the backcourt, replacing Scott Machado. Trinity part of a double team, and now the steal by Glover. But Glover could not keep his feet in bounds, racing down the left side. 
right by the Buffalo bench. Gales again with the pressure D, almost causing another Buffalo turnover. Yeah, Glover up in the second line of defense that time, looking like a guard shooting the gap on that pass. Alston will inbound just to the right of the Buffalo bench. 13 to 10, Gales leading. Buffalo led very briefly after Iona jumped out to a 6-0 lead. Alston, the inbounds pass, now with speed underneath. McCray goes up strong and is fouled late by Pelcher. It was a loose ball. The ball actually off the knee of the driving Brian Mulkey, and it came right to McCray. And McCray's second field goal, and he's got a chance to tie the ball game up at 13-13. Gales get a, did a good job of speeding Buffalo up to make them play fast, but not a good job by the back line of the defense. First foul against Iona, and McCray with the free throw is good. So the three-point play evens our ball game up at 13-13. Iona ball, Trinity Fields, right side, Dwight. Dwight pushing off on Barnett. Dwight puts it on the floor, goes to Jenkins along the right sideline. Picked by Pelcher, bounce pass to Glover up top. Open man, Dwight, three from the right corner, no good. Rebound right in the hands of Mulkey for Buffalo. The Bulls look to take the lead. Leo Rodriguez about to check back in, and now Filzen had the ball knocked out of bounds by Dwight right by the Iona bench. And Leo Rodriguez back in replacing Chris Pelcher. Well, as Tim Clue said at the top at the pregame show, Pelcher coming off some sickness. If Alejo could go, I think you'll see Pelcher in more quick spurts for minutes tonight. Jared Oldham, another freshman in the game, third guard as he replaces Dave Barnett. Buffalo ball, tie ball game. Brian Mulkey will back away from Rashawn Dwight. Goes along the right sideline, fills him up top to McCray. Just back of the free throw line. Bounce pass underneath, blocked by Alejo Rodriguez. Clean block out of bounds as he completely stuffed Jared Oldham, but still 16 on the shot clock for Buffalo. Underneath the basket, Mulkey, senior point guard, looking, looking, has to loop along the sideline. McCray catches back in the hands of Mulkey. Tie ball game, Austin goes on the right, fills it. 10 on the shot clock, fills in, right angle three, good. Bottom of the net by Zach Filzen and Buffalo now with a three-point lead. Well, I was just going to say that the Gales have done a good job keeping him off the three-point line, third in the nation with that. 16-13, Gales down by three. Jenkins to Glover at the free throw line. Ball fake, can't drive on Alston. Dumps out to Jenkins. Jenkins dribbles along the left sideline. Open man, Aleo Rodriguez, 15 on the clock. Baseline fields, eludes his man with the left hand and scores. Good cut and good finish inside with the left that time by Fields. Buffalo's lead at one, 16-15. Gales go zone again, 2-3. Mulkey along the right, fills in. Right in front of Iona head coach Tim Kloos, fills in in the middle. Oldham puts it on the floor, bounce pass, high post McCray, turning on Glover, spinning left with the left hand, no good. Rebound by Aleo Rodriguez. Outlet to Jenkins, Gales down by one. Jenkins, stutter move, back of the free throw line, crossover dribble on the 17-foot pop, no. Rebound McCray, out battling Glover for the ball, we run the other way. Oldham, lead pass, in flight, Austin scores and a foul. Well, Tim Kloos and the Iona coaching staff is not gonna be happy with that one. First of all, Jenkins took a quick four shot in transition that is not in flow of his, uh, his offensive game. And then Buffalo Gary just beat the Gales back out running and out hustling them. Chance for their second and one. The foul on Glover, two team fouls. And Austin's free throw is on the way and good. This is a team that shot 7 of 23 from the free throw line against Western Michigan and won that game by one. But they're much better looking at statistics during the season, free throw wise. 7 of 23, just one of those games. Yeah, and they get to the line a lot. Scott Machado back in for Iona, running the point. Gales find themselves down by four, 19 15. Here's Jenkins along the left. Buffalo man to man. Machado, head of the arc, goes left side. Trinity Fields puts it on the floor, can't back in. Resetting the offense. Machado around a screen from Rodriguez. 10 on the clock. Now the driving field feeds Glover. Glover goes up for his first dunk of the night. Good interior pass in that time by Iona. Still picking up full court. Gales to within two. Now Oldham with speed across the midcourt line. Bounce pass on the right. Oldham just back of the free throw line. They work it left to Filzen. Nice pick there by Austin. Filzen lost the hand to the dribble, but able to get it to Mulkey. 
All this on the perimeter. Austin works it left. 15 on the clock. Here's McCray. Top of the arc. Bounce pass. Back door. The layup blown, however, by Filzin. Battle for the rebound. McCray picks up the loose ball and puts it in. McCray with seven points and Buffalo back by four. Well, the blown layup by Mulkey, but McCray able to get the offensive putback after Iona muffed the chance for the rebound. Now Fields turns right side, three, no, long rebound run down by Filzen, and Filzen goes to Mulkey across the midcourt line. Watched by Jenkins down low, Alston beat his man, but the rebound, a shot in and out, and Alea Rodriguez sends Jenkins back the other way. Head fake, beat his man, Jenkins though, missed the layup on the other end, and then an Iona foul against Trinity Fields. And that'll be the third foul against Iona, as Buffalo, after the very slow start, has taken over the ball game for now. We have another media timeout, 11-14 to go first half. It is University of Buffalo, 21, Iona, 17. Back from New Rochelle in a moment, icgales.com. The Iona College Gold Club is an association of dedicated friends and alumni who support Gale athletic programs. Annual membership provides the needed academic support services, equipment, and facility upgrades for their student athletes. For more information on the Gold Club, call the Gold Club office at 914-633-2071 or visit on the web at icgales.com. That's www.icgales.com. The Iona College Gold Club, the lifeline for Iona College Athletics. icgales.com is the official online home for Iona College Athletics. Keep up with Iona's 22 NCAA Division I athletic teams 24-7. Iona Insider provides live and on-demand streaming audio and video content from game broadcasts, the coaches' shows, and more. Check out the photo gallery to see action shots from the field of competition and other athletic events. You can show your maroon and gold pride with official merchandise from the Gale Shop or a photo from the official photo store. There's so much more that you've got to check out icgales.com. Go Gale! We're back here in New Rochelle, CIT Action College Insider Tournament. Vim Parisi alongside Gary Stanley on icgales.com. Buffalo has battled back here in this second media session of the first half. They now lead Iona 21-17, 11-14 remaining in the first half. And the things that Iona did well defensively the first five minutes in terms of defensive transition and keeping Philzen off the three-point line hasn't been taking place recently. Key moment in the game. I said it was Trinity Fields' foul. They have given the foul against Michael Glover, and that is two on Glover, who finds himself on the bench with Iona trailing by four. So a big break for Buffalo. Runner by Watt, no good from 11 feet out, and Randy DeZubre, who has replaced Glover in the Iona lineup, got the rebound. Up court to Trinity Fields. Fields kick out Machado. Corner, Jenkins, three. In and out, rebound, a foul, a holding foul will be called against Robinson of Buffalo. The second foul against the Bulls. And now all of a sudden a Randy DeZouvre as Sean Armand checks in for Trinity Fields. A DeZouvre has to give Tim Kloos good minutes with Glover on the bench. Let's see how long Glover remains on the bench with two fouls not even half the way in. Iona down 21-17, Machado along the left in front of Reggie Witherspoon on the Buffalo bench. Gale's working around, Armand, right corner three, got it. That's that offensive spark that he usually gives his team in the first half. Second three-pointer for Iona, and it's a one-point Buffalo lead, 21-20. Fills in right wing the bank, too strong. Pelcher gets the rebound for Iona. And Iona looks to retake the lead. Up ahead to Machado across the midcourt line. Open Jenkins. Another three ball. Got it. This is when Iona plays its best basketball. Getting out in transition and open three-pointers. And the Gale is back on top 23-21. Nearing the 10-minute mark. Buffalo ball. Watt along the left. Goes to Oldham. Oldham now to Robinson between the circles. Further right to Filzen. Bounce pass up top to Watt. Guarded by Pelcher, a couple of dribbles by Watt. Now to Robinson from high post to low, blocked from behind by Pelcher. It's out of bounds, off Iona, and 10 remain on the Buffalo shot clock. Watch the inbounder here. Gale give up shots late in the shot clock, baseline out of bounds sometimes. Newerunk in the game. Austin with nine on the shot clock. Five on the clock. 
Watt will drive with the left hand, the bank too hard. DeZuvre able to get the rebound for Iona. Randy with speed across the midcourt line. Shovel pass, Armand, three, got it. And, a, and now knocked down underneath the basket was Randy DeZuvre. I didn't see what happened to Randy. He may have hit the back of his head as he fell yeah. very awkwardly. Yeah, neither did I. I was holding his throat. He might have caught an elbow there because they called the loose ball foul. And Iona with a 9-0 run. The Gales have opened up a five-point lead. And Buffalo was also taking a timeout. So it's 26-21. to 21. I think Re Reggie Witherspoon just snuck that one in. I thought the whistle blew because it was a Buffalo timeout and said it was a foul on Titus Robinson. So it still will be Iona Ball after the basket. It was an elbow foul against Titus Robinson. And Machado will inbound. So the Gales on a 9-0 run have opened up a five-point lead. Machado goes to Jenkins along the right sideline. Jenkins now cuts in the middle. Zubre playing the high post. Pelcher down low. Machado and Armand on the wings. Now Pelcher comes out for the ball. Back in the middle to Jenkins. Works it left now to Machado. Jamel back in the middle. Right side Armand. Jenkins one more time. Bounce pass left. Machado dribbles around one. Feeds outside Armand. Another three. No good. Had a good look at it but missed it badly. Rebound by Jared Oldham. Oldham for Buffalo. Left side Mulkey. Ball fake. Nice defense by Jenkins. Clogged up his drive. Side jump. No good. Follow up. In and out on the putback attempt. Here comes Jenkins for Iona. Gales by five. Armand goes baseline to Zuvre. Randy double team low blocks. Able to tip it to Machado. Gales get the ball back. Machado bumped along the line. Now Scotty goes back outside. 2-3 zone. Buffalo. Jenkins will fire a three. No. Zuvre tips the rebound up in the air. But Brian Mulkey gets it for Buffalo. Gales are shooting pretty from right outside. Eight and a half minutes to go. Left side, Mulkey faking a pass, drives on Jenkins, give off to Watt. Watt's pass deep in the right corner, three ball, no good, rebound by Jenkins for Iona. Jenkins turning up court for the Gales, gives to the trailer, Armand penetrates the lane. The runner may have been deflected, no foul, and the rebound by Watt for Buffalo. And we're seeing sloppy basketball right now by both teams. Buffalo settling it down, trying to get a good possession. Under eight minutes to go in the first half. Left of the key, Oldham, pick waiting by Watt. Nuriank on the right side, 15 on the clock. Deep along the right, Mulkey, quick double team Armand and Pelcher, and then a timeout taken by Buffalo as Mulkey found himself in the corner near the Gale bench and a double team, and that's the first Buffalo timeout. With the Gale still on a 9-0 run, they trail 21-17. Now Iona up 26-21 with 7.43 remaining. But Buffalo obviously still in this half and basketball game, only down five. It was a good baseline double team and trap that time by Iona. Now Buffalo still has 11 seconds to play with on the shot clock, though. Michael Glover, if you just joined us, two early fouls. Glover with one basket, but on the bench right now. And the Gales actually have played better with Glover on the bench as they have turned a four-point deficit into a five-point lead. Yeah, the three ball has definitely been good for the Gales here, and that's what they need. They need offensive options when they know that they can't have it from Glover. 11 on the clock for the Bulls, as Brian Mulkey will inbound just to the right of the Iona bench in the corner. Tough place to inbound the ball. Mulkey able to get it to McRae, back to Mulkey. His bounce pass kicked by Chris Pelcher. That's gonna put some more time on the clock for Buffalo. But first, we have another timeout. 7.43 to go. It is the quarterfinal round of the College Insider Tournament. Right now, Iona with the lead over Buffalo, 26-21. 7.41 to go, first half from Iona. Let's all go to the Beachmont. Come in and see what we're all about. For years, the Beachmont has been all about you. 
great dining, great atmosphere, and has been a meeting place where the entire Iona community gathers. The Beachmont Tavern at 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle, right across the street from Iona, has always been the first choice for Gale fans before and after each game. We are open seven days a week for lunch or dinner and is a fun place to be any hour of the day. Mondays are half price wing nights at the Beachmont. Enjoy the best buffalo wings in town, along with half off of domestic pitchers. Tuesday is a two-for-one night with domestic bottles and appetizers. Wednesday, enjoy our great burgers, half-priced as well, along with $3 domestic bottles. Friday is happy hour, so come in and enjoy some complimentary wings. If you're planning a get-together at the Beachmont, they have a private room available for your party. Or if you're having it at home, let the Beachmont cater it. The Beachmont is more than just a restaurant. It's a meeting place for sports fans. Watch the big game on one of our large TVs. The Beachmont has the NFL's Sunday ticket. Bring in a ticket stub from any Iona game and receive a free half dozen Beachmont wings. That's the Beachmont Tavern, 750 North Avenue in New Rochelle. We look forward to seeing you there. The Iona College Gold Club is an association of dedicated friends and alumni who support Gale athletic programs. Annual membership provides the needed academic support services, equipment, and facility upgrades for their student athletes. For more information on the Gold Club, call the Gold Club office at 914-633-2071 or visit on the web at icgales.com. That's www.icgales.com. The Iona College Gold Club, the lifeline for Iona College athletics. Everybody's making the switch to Honda of New Rochelle, the number one. Play back in and a turnover by Buffalo on the inbounds pass as the shot clock was running down anyway. Now the Gales do get it back with 7.34 to go, and Iona still has scored the last nine points in the game, and the Gales lead UAB 26-21. Scott Machado for Iona, shuffle pass Randy DeZuvri on the right, and then gives it away. Nueri Unk leaping high for the interception, and here's Mulkey. Goes on the right side, Oldham. Rolls to the freshman, McCray. Double teamed, able to find Nueri Unk. The runner from the free throw line is good. Owen Nueri Unk, the freshman, his first field goal. And Buffalo finally back on the board, 26-23. Machado at the free throw line. Goes outside Armand. Cross court to Jenkins. Picked by Pelcher. Jenkins beats his man down the right baseline. They work it around Machado. Head fake tries to go alley-oop. It was deflected up in the air and taken by Brian Mulkey. Mulkey with Odom. Mulkey instead will circle on the right sideline. Great pass, McCray. The underhand scoop now and Pelcher with his third rebound for Iona. Now Jenkins down that left side. Shuffle pass Armand. Not in a good position to shoot. Fakes the shot. Goes down low. Pelcher in the bank. No, but a foul. Pelcher will get to the free throw line on the blocking foul, which will be the fourth call against the Bulls. And Iona will get a couple of free throws leading by three. Good aggressive play that time by a Chris Pelcher. Earlier in the season, he probably would have faded away there. Went strong on the roll. Now he's got some free throw attempts. Austin gets called for the foul. Pelcher, a middling free throw shooter, and that one no good, clanged off the rim. Gales now two or three from the line. Pelcher 58%. Now DeZuvri out of the game and back in Rashawn Dwight for Iona. 6.32 to go in the first half. Pelcher the backup to Aleo Rodriguez. Aleo waiting at the scorer's table and the second one is good. Now Rodriguez comes in replacing Pelcher who gives Iona a four point lead, 27-23. Brian Mulkey will let the ball roll. Now picks up the point guard for Buffalo. Their blue clad road uniforms. The Bulls 20 game winners out of the Mid-American Conference, 20 and 13. Gales 23 and 11. McCray high post to low scores. And a foul by Aleo Rodriguez. And McCray is everything we heard he would be. The freshman now with nine points and a chance to get to double digits. First foul against Aleo, and it's a two-point Iona lead. This is a good one that Reggie Witherspoon has for the future. As you just alluded to, Gary Freshman, third on the team in scoring. Their team's leading rebounder. He's got a good, good body. He's strong around the box. And he's left-handed, too, which is an added bonus. That's right. Or maybe he's not. He actually took the free throw right-handed, but all the shots from the field were left-handed. Oh, that so was he a made righty. That, one. <laughs> that was a righty. But McCray now two of two from the line. It's a one-point Iona lead. He's got ten points. Dwight goes to Rodriguez in front of the Buffalo bench. Aleo able to find Armand. And out of Jenkins, right side Dwight, about to hit the six-minute mark. Man-to-man -man for Buffalo. 
Deep along the right sideline, Armand gives it away, but taken back by Fields. Shot clock didn't reset. Trinity penetrates. Take it away. It's an offensive foul against Trinity Fields. Like a bull in a china shop did not stop, and Jim Haney making the call. Team foul number five against Iona. Got to come to a jump stop and go straight up and down and not allow that forward momentum to carry you too far there. So a game of runs, Buffalo down by one with a chance to retake the lead. Mulkey double team, able to get it to Oldham, and now back to Mulkey. Into the forecourt against Iona, goes to Oldham along the right sideline. Back up top, Mulkey. Further left, Nuriaka. 20 on the shot clock. Oldham, shuffle past McCray, top of the lane. They work it left. Nuriaki for three, good. Aram Nuriaki and Buffalo back by two, 29-27. Good play by Nuriaki, both ends of the floor. Takes the charge, then hits the big shot on offense. Fourth three-pointer for Buffalo. Iona with four as well, 5.20 to go. As Buffalo has regained the lead, 29-27. Trinity Fields guarded by Oldham in the man-to-man. -man. Right side, Armand. Rashawn Dwight coming outside for the ball. Ten on the clock. They work it to Jenkins. Jenkins spinning, push off, foul. Jenkins as he knocked over Jared Oldham with the left hand and wanted to get the shot to so the second straight foul against Trinity Fields. I always feel like that that call is all about timing. If you're the defender, if you could hit the deck and fall at the same time that you get pushed, the officials will give you the call the majority of the time. Fields to the bench, five minutes to go. Iona down by two. Austin with the ball between the circles, left of the key to Oldham. Oldham goes right side, Mulkey. Nuriaki in front of the Iona bench with 18 on the clock. All over him, Dwight. Now McCray in a bad spot, but able to dribble out of it. 13 on the shot clock for Buffalo. They reset in the hands of Mulkey. Watched by Jenkins. Pick waiting by Austin. Five on the clock. Mulkey kick outside. Nuriaki for three. The line drive. In and out. Tip up McCray. No. Follow up tipped in by McCray. McCray just controlling the backboards right now. And Buffalo opens up a four-point lead. Gale started off on a 6-0 run. They got it up to five, and Buffalo now with their second lead of the game. 31-27, about to hit the four-minute mark. Rashawn Dwight, stutter move. Jenkins corner for three. Good! The fifth three-pointer for Iona, third for Jenkins. And it's a one-point Buffalo lead. Buffalo coach and staff mad at their guards for leaving Jenkins open in the corner that time. 31-30, we're under four minutes to play. Buffalo ball, Oldham along the right. Picked by Alston, goes in the middle to Yankee. Bounce down low to McCray. McCray shovel pass, one more pass, and a foul against Iona going up for the shot. Jawan Alston, and he will be to the free throw line when we come back. The under four media timeout, 3.44 to go first half. It is Buffalo leading Iona in a good matchup so far. 31-30, back from New Rochelle in a moment. Check out J.P.'s Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue on City Island, serving fresh seafood, sumptuous sizzling steaks, and delicious Italian specialties. J.P.'s is open every day year-round. Come in for lunch at J.P.'s Waterside every day starting at 11. Don't forget about us for catering all your special occasions either. Walk-ins and reservations are accepted. That's J.P.'s Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue right there on City Island. Give us a call at 718-885-3364. That's JP's Waterside Restaurant on City Island. Everybody's making the switch to Honda of New Rochelle, the number one volume Honda dealer in Westchester, the Bronx, and Connecticut. Honda of New Rochelle always gives you the lowest prices, the greatest selection, and the best service. That's why we're number one. Over 1,000 vehicles, always priced right and ready to roll. Visit our super center for a huge selection of pre-owned, all makes and models. Make the switch to Honda of New Rochelle. We take Take pride in our state-of-the-art service facility, friendly and professional staff, and factory trained technicians. Discover the difference the number one volume Honda dealer can make at Honda of New Rochelle. Exit 15 off I-95. Online anytime at HondaOfNewRochelle.com. Call 1-888-NEW-HONDA. Make the switch to Honda of New Rochelle. Everybody's doing it. Make the switch. Honda of New Rochelle. 
We're back here in New Rochelle, New York. CIT action. Buffalo on the road at Iona. And Buffalo has the one-point lead, 31-30. Just 3.44 remaining in the first half. Buffalo to the line. And the first one is up and good. Put home by Juwan Alston. He is two for two from the line. So Buffalo, as we said, 7-23 in the win against Western Michigan so far. The Bulls are 4-4. Four of four. So it's a different day, different court, and that free throw no good. As Alston made one of two, Buffalo leads by two with 3.40 to go. Iona ball. It is Machado, Armand, Rodriguez, Rashawn Dwight, and Randy DeZuvere. Dwight back of the arc, lost it to Oldham. Oldham able to tip it up ahead to Mulkey. Mulkey circles into the forecourt, gives to McCray with the left hand, scores. He's been unstoppable. McCray now with 14. As points off the turnover, the giveaway by Rashawn Dwight. And the Bulls by four. 34-30, nearing the three-minute mark. Machado goes to Dwight, kick out Armand. Armand back of the arc, one more pass, Machado. Now will penetrate the lane, had it knocked away, but able to tip it back to Dwight. Underneath Rodriguez, DeZouvre, 17-footer, straight on, back of the free throw line, and Randy DeZouvre getting on the board. A very good pass out of the post that time by Alejo Rodriguez. 34 to 32, Buffalo continues to lead by two. Mulkey along the right, Oldham will drive, stopped along the way by Dwight, and then a turnover against Buffalo. As Rashawn Dwight with the defensive play causing the Buffalo turnover, which is their eighth of the evening. Gales have a chance to tie or even take the lead. Two and a half to go. Iona down by two. Machado puts on the Jets off the glass. No. And McCray with the rebound. Boy, is he alone. Lead pass to Mulkey. Armand is back. Now Mulkey kick out on the left side to Oldham, and he gets called for traveling. So the second straight Buffalo turnover giving it back to Iona. Oldham and Coach Witherspoon disagreeing that time with official Wally Rutecki. Filzen and Barnett back in the game for Buffalo. Also Titus Robinson, so three starters back in for the Bulls. Gales remain the same, 2.20 to go, Iona down by two. Machado walks across the midcourt line. Scott's been quiet so far tonight. Machado hands to Rashawn Dwight on the weave. Now one more pass, Armand. Goes to Machado. Still 20 on the clock clock. Here is Armand, dribbles to the top of the arc, goes to Machado, all on the perimeter. Scotty back of the free throw line. Armand launching a three, got it! Sean Armand's three-pointer is third. He's got 11, and the Gales back by one. 35-34. Law on the left, Buffalo ball. McCray spinning on Rodriguez, and that's an offensive foul on McCray as Aleo went down. First time McCray didn't have his way in the paint. That is only the fifth foul against Buffalo. Yeah, McCray feeling his oats that time, but getting just a little bit too out of control. Five team fouls against Buffalo, seven against Iona. Jenkins about to go to the scorer's table as we're down to a minute and 35 to go. Iona with a one point lead. Both teams shooting very well. Armand from long range, no good. Rebound up in the air, run down by Aleo Rodriguez for Iona. New shot clock for the Gales, they work it around. Here's the drive by Machado all the way through, no good. Machado goes down hard, and a foul call against Buffalo. Machado will get to the free throw line, and good thing he's okay, he took a hard spill underneath the basket. Yeah, good, strong drive by Machado on the big offensive rebound and ball reversal. And Gary, a special halftime guest tonight here, a different one. Second foul against Mitchell Watt, the outgoing president of Iona College. Brother James Liguori spoke to Vinny this afternoon in his office and touched on a number of different topics. This is transition time around Iona. It is, for sure. Pat Lyons starting Monday at Seton Hall and Brother Liguori out. New president's been named. Machado making one of two free throws and Iona by two. Third point for Scott Machado for the Gales. 36-34, Buffalo ball on the right. Fills in now in the middle. Gales 2-3. Bounce pass McCray with the left hand. Two more over Randy DeZouvre. And McCray with 16. The freshman is killing him right now inside. They get the ball on the low blocks. With the exception of that one offensive charge, he has been unstoppable. Under a minute to play, 36 apiece. 
Machado back of the arc for Iona. Puts it on the floor now. Machado, little one-on-one -on -one move. Doesn't penetrate. Now goes to Jenkins. 15 on the clock. To Zuvri. Takes his man down low. Back pass to White. Shuffles the feet. Underneath the bank. Too hard. Rebound. Alejo Rodriguez. And the follow-up jam by Alejo. Gales back by two. Down to 30 seconds to go. Third field goal for Alejo Rodriguez. Virtually no shot clock. Maybe a half-second differential. Fills and fires off the hands and taken by Rodriguez. And Iona, leading by two, can wait for one final shot. And they're going to. Down to 15 seconds to go. And now a timeout taken by Tim Close. May as well use it as the timeouts don't carry over to the second half. So Tim Close stops the clock with 13.9. And a chance to design. Not a little one-on-one -on -one move. Doesn't penetrate. Now goes to Jenkins. 15 on the clock. To Zuvri. Takes his man down low. Back pass to White. Shuffles the feet. Underneath the bank. Too hard. Rebound. Alejo Rodriguez. And the follow-up jam by Alejo. Fobble. And taken off by Jamel Jenkins. Just in the game for Iona. Lead. Felt like it was very, very good for whoever went in to the locker room at the half with that pop in there. Step in the Gales. Have the chance to make this. A two possession game here and you gotta credit both teams Iona for hanging in there with the foul trouble of Glover but Buffalo for just controlling the pain and taking the lead midway through the first half just a small sampling hearing about their 49 to 48 win over Western Michigan both Buffalo and Western Michigan inept in that game and certainly Buffalo playing an awful lot better tonight giving Iona all they can handle 10 on the clock now, Machado for the Gales, seven on the clock, still to Jenkins, to Scott with four, one more pass to Zuvri for three, it is good, fading away in front of the Buffalo bench as time expires, and that's the first three-pointer all season long by Randy Buffalo Zubre. playing an awful lot better tonight, giving Iona all they can handle. 10 on the clock now, Machado for the Gales, seven on the clock, Still to Jenkins, to Scott with four. One more pass to Zuber. Buffalo playing an awful lot better tonight, giving Iona all they can handle. Ten on the clock. So Iona and Buffalo both shooting exceptionally well from three-point range. Iona can seven three-pointers, Buffalo with four. And that's the difference in the game, that last second three-pointer by Randy DeZuvery. Iona up by five. Now in the second half, East Tennessee State leading Ohio. 46 to 40 in the quarterfinals. The winner of this game will take on either Ohio or East Tennessee State in the semis on Friday and Saturday. Right now, it's Iona's advantage, up by five. We'll be back with a recorded interview with the outgoing Iona president, Brother James Ligori, right after these words, icgales.com. Go like Iona goes. All Sports International in Yorktown Heights is more than just a travel agency. It's a full service provider for all of your travel needs. Whether you are one, two, or a team, All Sports International agents are trained to negotiate the lowest airfares. But they do more than just that. Hotels, cars, vans, whatever you need, whether it's far in advance or at the last minute, All Sports International will get it done. You worry about yourself, they'll take care of the rest. Individual or group, business or pleasure, close or far away. The folks at All Sports International will do it all at the lowest possible cost to you. All Sports International in Yorktown Heights. Call 914-243-4590. All Sports International. They make sure the Gales get to all their road games. At Pasta Pasta, you can enjoy a fine dining experience at an authentic Italian restaurant located on Williams Bridge Road in the Bronx. At Pasta Pasta, all of their fine Italian dishes are made fresh on the premises daily. Pasta Pasta can cater and deliver for any function in both Westchester and the Bronx. Come and enjoy your next get-together in our luxurious party room. Pasta Pasta is open seven days a week. Call 718-892-9634, located on 2023 Williams Bridge Road in the Bronx. That's Pasta Pasta. Yellow Book Yellow Pages is packed with buying information, complete yellow pages, business white pages, community information, area maps, money-saving coupons, even a restaurant menu section. And the easy-to-read print helps you find whatever you're looking for. Available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yellow Pages reaches your potential customers at the exact moment they are ready to buy. For more information about promoting your business in Yellow Book, call 1-800-YB-YELLOW. Yellow Book, not the other book.
All right, Gale fans, special guest for you here at halftime of this Iona Buffalo game, and it is the president of Iona College, Brother Ligori. And, brother, this has to be a special yet bittersweet time for you, you seeing your final men's basketball season coming to an end here, hopefully not tonight, but just a tremendous job by the team here this basketball season. Absolutely. I couldn't be more pleased with Tim, with the people on the team, with his coaches, and especially with RAD, uh, Pat Lyons, who will be missed when he leaves us next week. Well, yeah, I'm glad you brought up Pat because you've seen a lot of terrific administrators in your time. But your thoughts on the job that Pat has done here during this last reign? I have said it publicly, so I'd be perfectly happy to say it to our friends out on the line. He is probably my favorite administrator. He has a philosophy which I believe in, which is basically we'll figure it out. And that's exactly what he does. He picks well. He picks people well. He knows how to deal with people. He's a good fundraiser. He knows sports. What's not to like? How has college Division One athletics changed in what you've seen, Pat, and the challenges Pat and yourself have had these last couple of years compared to what college basketball was when you first took over? Is it fundraising? Is it facilities? I think it's all of the above. It is fundraising. It is facilities because, as Brother Thomas Scanlon, the former president of Manhattan, used to say, we're in an arms war. So what someone else builds, we have to build. One of Pat Strange has been able, he's been able to raise money and to completely renovate the old part of Heinz so that now it's as good as the new part of Heinz. It's all through fundraising. And fundraising has been something that, you know, you and your staff here at Iona have done a tremendous job doing. Um, you've also, in your time here as president, seen tremendous men's basketball coaches, and you've seen very successful coaches move on to greener pastures. In your short, short time with Tim Kluse, what makes Tim special? He's a very genuine human being, and he obviously gets a great deal of satisfaction from coaching and from seeing the team flourish and seeing the students flourish. And he is hungry, but not maniacally hungry. Uh, he knows how to win, and after that game at St. Peter's, with St. Peter's, I should say, he also has shown he knows how to lose, which is a very important lesson to learn. Absolutely, and you know, when you took over you know, in the mid and then heading into the late 90s, mid-major basketball, college basketball in the metropolitan area, and obviously the NCAA tournament was very big and very important to colleges and universities. But did it surprise, did it surprise you, or is it what you expected as to just how big it's become, especially the last five to ten years? Well, I can answer that question by telling you a quick story. The first time we made the big dance, the idea at the time, who I think was Richard Petrucioni, said to me, we're going to have this party on Sunday, and we're going to sit down, and we're going to watch TV, and we're going to see where we get picked to, to go to. I said, Rich, who the hell is <laughs> going to come to such a thing? He said, you would be surprised. Wait. The place was jammed, and that was the last time I ever questioned Rich about such things. <laughs> That's a good story. Talking with Brother Liguori here on a very special halftime show here, icgales.com, Buffalo at Iona. Well, Brother, I want to talk about your time here. Um, I started personally here as a freshman here in the fall of 96, and, you know, you walk over to campus now, like, for this interview, and it's just amazing, all of the buildings and everything that came about. What were the main challenges that you faced to turn this from a commuter school to now a true college campus? Well, so much of it is focused on the campus master plan that we did and the presidential strategic plan. Basically, in order to change the culture, you have to change the facilities, you have to change technology, you have to increase faculty, you have to do a lot of fundraising, and you have to change the perception in the larger community, all of which it must be done or none of it gets done. So that's, that's part of what had to be done. And luckily we had lots of generous people, including Mr. Hines, whose gymnasium we're sitting in right now, who uh, have been extraordinarily generous. And that's the main key. We just uh, literally this last week f found uh, the money to do the Hagen initiatives, including the trading floor, which will be done starting on May 16th. Uh, it's all through fundraising, uh, $2 million 
is not what it used to be, but it's still a good amount of money, and if we don't have it, we need it. So we got it. You know, so often when, when, when an organization or when a place has great leadership, you obviously feel the, that vibe amongst the students, amongst the employees, am amongst the people in the organization. And, you know, there's questions about leadership as to, wow, you know, you just you can't picture the place without them. When did you personally know that you wanted to take on other challenges in your future? When I accepted a last term, which is now four and a half years ago, I did tell the board at that time it would be my last term because I have an abiding belief that if you stay too long, you're not only doing bad things for yourself, but also you're not helping the university. Every once in a while, you need a new set of eyes at the helm, and in our new president-elect, Dr. Joseph Nyer, we have that, and we will get that. So it was time then, and it's time now. What made Iona so special to you? Obviously, you have known about the college for a very long time, and you had your vision coming in, and you have long-standing relationships here, and you were a part of Iona growing up. But what really will stand out when you sit, when you're able to take a deep breath and look back as your greatest memories? I think the greatest memories I would have, especially since I grew up two miles from here, is how Iona has grown and how the people of Iona have matured so that now Iona is more than an adolescent. It's become an adult as a, as in terms of college uh, life anyway, in terms of college length of life, I should say. So the people, the people. We used to say the proof is in the people at Iona, and I do believe that's the case. And that's what I'll remember. Uh, but I leave happily. I leave happily because we've done what we could. We've done some things. Other things will be done by other people. And uh, I will be looking on to see what they will be and rejoicing when they happen. We're talking with Brother Lagori here on a special halftime show. And, and you mentioned other things will be done by other people. I think so many times when you talk to the Iona community, everyone's talking about, oh, do you remember what the place used to look like 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago? Now lo look what it looks like. You know, when the new president and the new leadership and the new change takes place, what needs to be done from now into the future? Because there's sometimes almost like, do you just keep it rolling? Oh, well, no, I think there's a lot more that can be done with the new strategic plan. There's a tremendous uptick, if you will, that Iona should undertake in terms of its reputation, in terms of its place within the university community, in terms of its fundraising, its endowment campaign, its faculty, its facilities. We have to build more facilities, and those will probably be out on North Avenue in that vicinity. Lots to do. All right, well, as always, you, you got everything at your fingertips to do. I just want to thank you so much for taking the time here, and this is a great halftime touch for our audience at icygales.com. It's my pleasure, and let's go, Gales. Gary and I will be back with the second half here. Don't go anyplace. icygales.com, Buffalo at Iona. The Iona College Goal Club is an association of dedicated friends and alumni who support Gale athletic programs. Annual membership provides the needed academic support services, equipment, and facility upgrades for their student athletes. For more information on the Goal Club, call the Goal Club office at 914-633-2071 or visit on the web at icgales.com. That's www.icgales.com. The Iona College Goal Club, the lifeline for Iona College athletics. Holiday Inn Select in downtown Stanford is the official hotel sponsor of the Iona Gales. Whether just visiting Iona or coming to cheer on the maroon and gold, the Holiday Inn features recently renovated guest rooms and suites that reflect a crisp, contemporary design of an urban downtown getaway. Each room features high-speed internet and wireless connectivity, in addition to access to a health and fitness center, indoor pool, business center, and 700 Bar and Grill, a casual dining atmosphere with a pub-style cuisine. The Holiday Inn Select Downtown Stamford is conveniently located at 700 East Main Street in downtown Stamford, just off exit 8 of I-95. Holiday Inn Select Downtown Stamford is also accessible by Metro North's New Haven line. For more information or make a reservation, call 203-358-8400.
Having a party? Well, smart shoppers know the name Shannon Beverages of New Rochelle. Shannon proudly carries the largest selection of domestic imported and craft brewed beer in Westchester. All your favorite brands of soda and ice, too. Stock up now. Our discount prices can't be beat. Party balls. And for your convenience, quarter kegs and half kegs are always available. Remember, for discount beer and soda, all the top brands, domestic and imported, Shannon Beverages, just a quarter mile south of Iona at 437 North Avenue in New Rochelle. Call 632-1115. That's 632-1115. Shannon Beverages. And welcome back to New Rochelle, New York, the Heinz Athletic Center, getting ready for the start of the second half. Quarterfinal round of the College Insider Tournament, and on the scoreboard in the second half, East Tennessee State now with a nine-point lead over Ohio. About ten minutes to go in that game, 59-50. to 50. The winner here will likely play at East Tennessee State on either Friday or Saturday. We'll find out exactly later on. Right now, Iona with a five-point advantage, 41 to 36. Gary Stanley with Vin Parisi, numbers very even. It's been a great ball game. Both teams playing very well. Iona 15 of 32, 47 percent. Seven of 14 from three-point range, four of six from the line. Iona out rebounded, 17 to 15. Gales with 12 assists in that first half. Scott Machado, three of them. Buffalo with only seven turnovers buffalo with a top heavy 12 and iona with only seven the bulls an even 50 percent shooting 14 of 28 four of six from behind the arc four of five from the line individually iona led by sean armand 11 points jamel jenkins three three-pointers he's got nine and Vinny, i think that a lot of talk in the iona locker room at the half how do they stop javon mccray the freshman in 12 minutes, 16 points, 7 of 10 from the field, 5 rebounds, and he obviously has been Buffalo's best player, and the Gales have to find a way to contain McCray in the second half. And he played phenomenal, but also remember, Gary, on the other side of the ball, the Gales didn't really have Glover's presence inside at all. Glover only played 8 minutes. I think the two things that jump out at me stat-wise is Buffalo only took 5 free throws, and Iona only took six free throws. So one, the officials are letting him play. Two, both teams are taking a lot of jump shots. But I think Reggie Witherspoon's going to talk about the 12 turnovers. Iona really sped them up at times, and the Bulls are on pace to turn the basketball over 24 times tonight. Gales led by as many as six. Buffalo with their largest lead at four. And a big shot by Randy DeZuvery right at the buzzer. Three more points for the Gales have given them a five-point cushion as we enter the final 20 minutes. This is the first Iona postseason home game since 1996 when they hosted St. Joseph's of Philadelphia in the NIT and lost that game. And you'd hope that Tim Kloos gets the same results than Tim Welsh did out of that. I think after they hosted NIT there, the next year it was NIT at Connecticut, and then the next year it was the championship versus Syracuse in the tourney. This is just money in the bank, still playing this time of year for both Iona and Buffalo. The Bulls 20 and 13, the Mid-American Conference and Iona 23 and 11, the last team playing in the MAC, our MAC. All right, it's Buffalo ball from left to right, second half underway, fills in, knocked away by Glover. Glover with Armand and Dwight. Glover will take it himself, block. Glover gets the rebound, but he might have been stepping on the end line. He was. The block from behind by Robinson. The ball came back to Glover, but he was out of bounds. So the turnover by Buffalo, their 13th, but doesn't lead to any points. Iona by five, just the start of things. Buffalo ball fills in. Five points in that first half. Bounce pass on the left to Mulkey. Up top now. They work it down low. Robinson turning on Alea Rodriguez to Watt and a foul on the floor against Iona. Gales committed eight fouls in that first half, and that's going to be the second on Aleo Rodriguez. So both Rodriguez and Glover have two fouls apiece. Non-shooting foul. Buffalo will inbound. Mulkey underneath the basket looking. Goes to Mitchell Watt. That to Mulkey, and then another foul against Iona as Sean Armand tried to block off Mulkey, and Armand called for the foul. So two quick Iona fouls, 38 seconds in. Again, Buffalo will inbound. Mulkey, the senior, trying to keep his career alive. Guarded by Dwight, the ball kicked by Aleo Rodriguez, and it's still Buffalo ball. I thought Rodriguez was going to pick up yet another team foul there, trying to defend Mitchell Watt in the post. Mulkey will inbound from the corner. 
Mulkey looking, goes along the sideline, gets the ball back. Pick waiting, Robinson goes underneath. Now Mulkey, fadeaway jumper from the side rim, no good. Rebound taken off by Dwight for Iona. Lead pass to Armand in flight. Armand then gives it away as he tried to thread the needle to Glover and another Iona turnover. So neither team has come out rip-roaring in the opening minute. We have yet to have a score. 41-36 Iona. Fills in, goes up top to Watt. Now along the left, Mulkey to Robinson, just back of the free throw line. Right side to Barnett, fires it in, no good. Tip up, wouldn't go. Rebound taken back by Buffalo. And another foul against Sean Armand going for the loose ball. So Armand with two quick fouls to open up the second half. And Jamel Jenkins pops up off the bench for Iona. I'll tell you, Tim Clues can't be happy about this start here to the second half. The Gales are fortunate. Buffalo's missed some chippies inside. The Bulls are quicker off penetration right now. Another non-shooting foul. Buffalo ball at the free throw line. Spinning is Barnett. Left to the key. Low blocks Watt. Watt puts it on the floor. Backing in on Rodriguez. Knocked away. Watt recovers. Turnaround jumper. No good. Rebound by Glover. Only the third rebound for Glover, who only played eight minutes in that first half with two fouls. He had two points. Here's Machado along the right. A minute and a half in. Again, neither team has scored here in the beginning of the second half. 2-3 zone for Buffalo. Machado goes left side. Jenkins. Jenkins had nine in that first half. High post to Rodriguez. Fires a pass and yet another foul. This one against the Bulls. And that's going to be their first of the second half. Whistle down against Titus Robinson. And that'll be his second foul. Now here comes McCray, who lit up Iona in the first half. McCray in the game along with Juwan Alston. Robinson sits down along with Watt. Iona ball. Gales by five. Rashawn Dwight back of the arc. Open Jenkins. Quick three. No good. Long rebound. Run down by Jenkins, who gets it back for Iona. Nice hustle by Jenkins. Did not stand and watch his three-pointer and took off and got the rebound. New shot clock for Iona. Machado, pick waiting by Glover. Machado puts it on the floor. Left side, Dwight. Up top, Jenkins. Another three. Good. Eight for Iona. Four for Jenkins. And Iona now with an eight-point lead, their largest of the night. Yeah, very big buck at that time. First points of the second half. Austin looks to go back door. Fills and almost walked. Almost gave it away. Loose ball. It's going to roll out of bounds. Which way? And it's going to be off Buffalo, so Iona will get it back. The 14th turnover against the Bulls. Okay, if Filsen has not looked comfortable the entire night, only took four shots in 13 minutes in the first half. Don't forget, to Buffalo's disadvantage, they had to play over the weekend at Western Michigan while Iona was able to rest and lick their wounds. Both teams pretty beat up this time of year. Iona by eight with the ball. Rodriguez to White. Straight on three. No good. Rebound will be run down in the corner by Alston. As the Gales miss fire, looking for their ninth three-pointer of the night. Now Mulkey into the forecourt. Alston, shuffle pass on the right, fills him. McCray up top. Left side, Mulkey. Left angle three, short. Rebound, however, McCray puts it on the floor. Head fake, missed the shot on Rodriguez. Follow-up tipped in. Let's see who they credit that one to. Buffalo getting their first basket of the second half. It's 44-38. Could have been McCray. It is McCray following up his own miss. He's got 18. Now Glover drives, and Glover fouled on the floor. And that'll be Austin's foul, but a non-shooting foul. Two team, two team fouls on Buffalo. I tell you, Javon McCray does that extremely well. He Rebounds his own misses very quick with a soft touch around the rim. Gale ball, Rashawn Dwight loops along the sideline. Rodriguez currently okay after suffering a deep knee bruise in the win against Valparaiso in the opening round. Jenkins for Iona with 25 on the clock. Gives to Rashawn Dwight. Quick double team finds Machado. Now return to Dwight. Right side, ball fake, driving on fills and all the way through and scores. <laughs> Good drive that time. No backside defensive step up that time by the Bulls. Second basket for Dwight. Iona back by eight nearing the 16-minute mark. Austin with it underneath the basket, and we had a foul up and over Scott Machado on Dave Barnett, and that's going to be team foul number four against Iona. First on Scotty tonight. Hey, Gary, coming into this game, Zach Filson took 420 shots on the season. You got Mulkey who took 341. Everyone after that's 240 and under, and Filson just looks like 
He's fatigued and can't get going. Fills into the bench now. Here's the kickoff in the corner. Mulkey for three. Good. Fifth for Buffalo. And that cuts Iona's lead down to five. Now Machado, coast to coast, underneath. Whistle on the play. And it's going to be a timeout as Machado, driving in the lane, drew the whistle. And the first media timeout of the second half, 15.53 to go. Iona leading Buffalo 46 to 41 for the right to move on to the semifinals back from Iona in just a moment on the College Insider Tournament. Check out JP's Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue on City Island serving fresh seafood, sumptuous sizzling steaks and delicious Italian specialties. JP's is open every day year round. Come in for lunch at JP's Waterside every day starting at 11. Don't forget about us for catering all your special occasions either. Walk-ins and reservations are accepted. That's JP's Waterside Restaurant at 703 Mitterford Avenue right there on City Island. Give us a call at 718-885-3364. That's JP's Waterside Restaurant on City Island. Yellow Book Yellow Pages is packed with buying information, complete yellow pages, business white pages, community information, area maps, money saving coupons, even a restaurant menu section. And the easy to read print helps you find whatever you're looking for. Available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Yellow Pages reaches your potential customers at the exact moment they are ready to buy. For more information about promoting your business in Yellow Book, call 1 800 YB Yellow. Yellow Book, not the other book. The Iona College Gold Club is an association of dedicated friends and alumni who support Gale athletic programs. Annual membership provides the needed academic support services, equipment, and facility upgrades for their student athletes. For more information on the Gold Club, call the Gold Club office at 914-633-2071 or visit on the web at icgales.com. That's www.icgales.com. The Iona College Gold Club, the lifeline for Iona College athletics. Back here at Iona, 15.50 to go. Gales nursing a five-point lead over Buffalo. The Bulls have the ball as Mulkey able to fight his way across the midcourt line. Now to McCray. McCray with a game-high 18, leading both teams. Now Mulkey, three-pointer, will be short. Barely hit the rim. Battle for the rebound underneath. Saved by Buffalo and McCray for the jam. Great play lying on the floor by Alston. And McCray now with 20, cuts the lead down to three. 46-43. Gales need to get Michael Glover going. Only two points in the game. Can only played eight minutes in that first half with two fouls. Rashawn Dwight for Iona. Gales led by five at the half. It's now a three-point lead. Machado with it just inside the midcourt line. Shot clock down to 13. Machado can't find Glover. Now loops to Glover. Goes up and lays it in. It barely rolled in as Glover got knocked down. His second field goal. Talk about scoring it the hard way. Lead back at five, high post McCray, turning on Rodriguez, foul line jumper, he does it from outside. 22 for Javon McCray. Wow, this young man showing the entire repertoire inside and out. 48-45, Machado, double high post Glover, Rodriguez. Machado goes to Aleo, Rodriguez puts it on the floor, hands off now to Jenkins along the right sideline, down low, Glover. Outside Jenkins, left side Dwight, three on the way, will be wide to the right and taken off by McCray, who does it all. Buffalo down by three with the ball, right side. Barnett goes up top, McCray. Now to Mulkey, picked by McCray. Mulkey doesn't use it. Fires to an open Barnett on the right wing. Open, shoots a three, overshot it, rebound Jenkins. Here's Iona down that right side. Nice move by Machado on the bad pass. Scotty penetrates the float, no good. Rebound battle for it and a foul against Buffalo as Glover gets knocked down again. It's going to be Juwan Austin's third foul. Now a couple of changes for Iona and one for Buffalo. Pelcher in, also Sean Oman replacing Dwight and Rodriguez, the two seniors. It is the third Buffalo foul of this half. 14 minutes even to go. Gales by three. Armand for three. It's off the mark. No good. Rebound. Batted around and taken on the run by Mulkey down that left side. Across the midcourt line. Mulkey cuts diagonally across the court. On the sideline with the pass to Oldham. Oldham cuts up top. Goes to Robinson. Now to Barnett. Barnett just left of the key. Here's McCray. 
McCray on the perimeter, lost the ball, diving his Pelcher. McCray trying to tie him up. He did jump ball, but it goes Iona's way on the alternate arrow. So a rare mistake by Javon McCray, and the Gales will get it back, leading by three. And this is a good lineup Iona is, has in right now. They got size with Glover and Pelcher up front, and Machado has two shooters to kick out to in Jenkins and Armand. But Iona needs points from Glover and Machado, just a combined seven between them. Gales nonetheless leading 48-45. Glover goes outside to set a screen. Machado double teamed and a reach in foul against Buffalo's Mulkey, his second foul. And now the team fouls are all even at 4-4. Both teams trying to keep their seasons alive and advance to the semifinals. And again, it was East Tennessee State, last check leading Ohio by nine. Here we need the 13 minute mark. Machado, double high post Glover and Pelcher. Machado left of the key, goes to Pelcher, return to Machado. Glover very well guarded underneath. Now to the cutting, Jenkins penetrates the lane. Pass off, knocked away, Jenkins gets it back outside Armand. Left baseline drive, his pass to Pelcher knocked away. And we had an offensive foul against Iona. I think it's Armand, and it is the third against Sean Armand. See, Sean shooting it well tonight from downtown. He can't pick up fouls like this off the bat. By Glover. Machado puts it on the floor. Left side, Dwight. Up top, Jenkins. Another three. Good. Eight for Iona. Four for Jenkins. Round. Eight earlier in this half. Buffalo brings up Mulkey. Open. Right side, Robinson. Now to Barnett. Top of the key, Watt. Now to Mulkey. Deep in that corner. Guarded by Machado. Up top, Robinson. They try it again on the weave, just like Iona's play. Here's Oldham, foul line jumper, Watt, no good, rebound, almost uncontested to Randy DeZouvre. Sends Machado away down that right side. Machado to Glover on the right lane, backing in, fights his way in, then throws outside to Jenkins. Now to Machado, right side to Zouvre. ball fake, the drive, handoff, Pelcher, up strong and scores. Zouvre lucky he didn't get called for the charge that time on the pass, got caught in the air. Good finish at the end by Pelcher. Back to a five-point lead nearing the 12-minute mark is Mulkey for Buffalo. Along the right sideline, Barnett bumped into by Randy DeZouvre. And the foul against Randy on the block, it's going to be number six against the Gales. Well, very good and smart play that time by Dave Barnett. He saw that the double team was coming on the right wing, put it on the floor to draw the foul. Another non-shooting foul, however. All the fouls in this half against Iona have been on the floor. About to hit the 12 minute mark, Iona by five. Mulkey along the right sideline, Barnett. Now to Oldham. It was back to Mulkey along left sideline. Pick waiting by Watt, goes in the middle, Barnett straight on three. No, high rebound taken by Pelcher. And here's DeZouvre up ahead to Machado down that left side. Stutter move by Scott, can't get in. Goes baseline to Zouvre. bounce pass Glover. His shot is blocked. Oh, a clean block by Barnett. Here comes Mulkey the other way. Dips that right shoulder. His pass intercepted by Machado. Machado and Glover. Machado, Glover for the one-handed jam and a seven-point Iona lead. It was a 2-0 run as Witherspoon fired up, goes to the bench. Machado, Machado, Machado and Glover. Machado, Glover for the one-handed jam and a seven-point Iona. 52-45, about to hit the 11-minute mark. Iona with the lead, Robinson right side, Mulkey picked by Robinson, bounce pass, Watt, back door, underneath, Robinson lays it in. Great offensive execution right now, Witherspoon and the Bulls are going to take a timeout to get subs in, but good, good offense drawn up that time by Buffalo. Titus Robinson, we heard a little bit of combination, they do a little back door like Princeton there, they've done that a number yeah, of times. Yeah, some Princeton, uh, prin uh, Princeton principals. Excuse me, to their half court motion offense with Tim Clues talked about in the pregame show. And you could tell we saw it earlier in the basketball game. Phil's and got a couple back cuts. These guys move very, very well without the basketball. It's a great matchup. Tell you, Buffalo and Iona, tooth and nail all night long. The largest lead was eight. Right now, Iona leads by five, still 11 minutes to go. And if you're talking about a mid major tournament like the College Insider Tournament, Hey, this is good basketball we're seeing here tonight. And I think if you're in the Metro Atlanta Conference, it's good to go against the Mid-American Conference, which both, you know, leagues like to call the other MAC. But uh, the other MAC in the Midwest is usually ranked a little bit higher and has more teams in the postseason. So it would be a very good win for Iona. Final minute at East Tennessee State. 
three-point game now. East Tennessee State leads Ohio 74-71. 55 seconds to go in that game for a trip to the semifinals. Ohio making a good late run, getting back into that game. They were down by nine, now down by three. Here, Iona leads 52-47, still 11.05 to go. Iona has won 10 of their last 11. The only blemish, the championship game of the MAC tournament, losing to St. Peter's in Bridgeport. But Iona has played lights out, and this is certainly one of their tougher tests, Buffalo, during Iona's winning streak. I'll tell you, and a good crowd eventually showed up here. Students back on campus, good support by the alumni tonight. Play back in after that timeout taken by Reggie Witherspoon. Buffalo with three timeouts, Iona left with four. Gales leading by five, Jenkins, Machado, Pelcher, Glover, and DeZubre. As the Gales bring up Scott Machado, three points tonight. Machado across the midcourt line, double high post, Glover and Pelcher. Machado contains with the ball. Now goes to Jenkins, back of the arc, under 11 to play. High post, it's Michael Glover, double team. Glover needs help, able to keep the dribble alive and dump it back to Jenkins. Only 13 on the shot clock now. Jenkins will drive to the free throw line. Turnaround jumper, Jenkins back rim, no good. Nice rebound taken off by Gerard Oldham of Buffalo in a five point game. Fills in for three, no good on a wide open look into Zuber. He gets the rebound and runs the other way for Iona, but no teammates with him. So he dumps it back to Machado. Machado at the free throw line. Lean in pass intended for Glover in traffic. Knocked away. Filson's got the ball tied up by DeZuvre. And a jump ball gives it to Buffalo on the alternate arrow. I'll tell you, you know how you know this Buffalo team's fatigue. Gary Filson's one of the better three-point shooters in the country. Mulkey shoots 36% from downtown. They've both been short all night. Media timeout, 10.15 to go. Iona 52, Buffalo 47. Back in a moment, the quarterfinals of the College Insider Tournament. Holiday Inn Select in downtown Stanford is the official hotel sponsor of the Iona Gales. Whether just visiting Iona or coming to cheer on the maroon and gold, the Holiday Inn features recently renovated guest rooms and suites that reflect a crisp, contemporary design of an urban downtown getaway. Each room features high-speed internet and wireless connectivity, in addition to access to a health and fitness center, indoor pool, business center, and 700 bar and grill, a casual dining atmosphere with a pub-style cuisine. The Holiday Inn Select downtown Stamford is conveniently located at 700 East Main Street in downtown Stamford, just off exit 8 of I-95. Holiday Inn Select downtown Stamford is also accessible by Metro North's New Haven line. For more information or make a reservation, call 203-358-8400. We're back here in Nourishell, CIT action. It's Iona with the five-point lead, 52-47, 10-15 remaining here in this basketball game. Buffalo battling hard on the road the way Iona did at Valpo last week. That's why we have this game tonight here. And the winner of this game will either be playing Ohio or East Tennessee State on the road. And Gary? 40 seconds to go in that game and still a three-point East Tennessee State lead, 74-71. You are all over that ticker, by the way. It's called cell phones. <laughs> Buffalo ball, five-point Iona Lee. No double-digit margins for either club tonight as it is Brian Mulkey bringing up for Buffalo to Alston along the sideline, fills in, bounce up top to McCray, way away from the basket. Hands now to Mulkey, about to hit the 10-minute mark. 10 minutes to go, 18 on the shot clock. Mulkey cuts around a screen from Alston, goes to McCray, can't take Pelcher down low. Machado diving in the pack, gets a hold of the ball. Another jump ball, we know this one by heart. This time the arrow in Iona's direction. Guys getting on the floor, hustling. This is when you know it becomes gut check time. Buffalo coach Reggie Witherspoon taking off the jacket. This is when you're going to see guys take it to another level for the final nine minutes. 12th year for Reggie Witherspoon as coach at UAB. Machado for Iona. Goes to Rashawn Dwight between the circles. Picked by Glover. Dwight ball fake, then the drive. Can't go all the way. Has to feed outside Jenkins. Jenkins cuts around. Fills in. Penetrates. Scores with the left hand. Second time Jenkins has had a good left-handed finish inside. 
14 for Jenkins, Iona by seven, 9.25 to go. Mulkey along the right. Or rather, Oldham feeds to Mulkey. Mulkey between the circles. Austin with a pick. Mulkey carries on the right side, stops the dribble. Down low, McCray, cutting on Pelcher. Double teamed by Jenkins, put it up with the left hand, and he scores again. McCray now with 24. What a show he has put on. Oh. Nine minutes to go, Iona by five, 54-49. Machado along the right sideline, penetrates, has to back off on Mulkey, ends up top of the arc, feeds to Glover, goes up and scoops it in. Glover now with eight. Six in the second half, and it's back to a seven-point lead. Here comes Brian Mulkey for Buffalo. Backs away from Glover playing the top of that 2-3. Oldham along the sideline. Now McCray coming out for the ball, goes to Mulkey on the right angle. Top of the key, Alston, kick out Oldham. Corner fills in three, hit the side of the backboard. And what was the call? Glover going for the loose ball. Glover gets called for the foul, and that is three on Glover, and seven now on Iona, a one and one. So three fouls on Glover going for that loose ball. How about Zach Phils in that time? 42% three-point shooter hitting the side of the backboard. Austin for a one and one, 61% free throw shooter. It is up, no good. A rebound grab by Pelcher with one hand. And Iona with a seven-point lead. Nearing the eight-minute mark, Machado, front of the Iona bench, cross-court, Jenkins, three on the way, got it! Well, in place of injured Kyle Smythe, first it was Sean Armand, now it's Jermel Jenkins getting it done from downtown. Biggest lead of the night for either team, 10 points, under eight minutes to go, 59-49. Alston in the lane for a tough bank and drew the foul, and that'll be a shooting foul. Buffalo will be on the line. In the person of Juwan Alston, when we come back, the under eight media timeout with Iona enjoying their biggest lead over Buffalo, 59 to 49. Back in a moment, quarterfinal action, the college insider tournament. Go like Iona goes. All Sports International in Yorktown Heights is more than just a travel agency. It's a full service provider for all of your travel needs. Whether you are one, two, or a team, All Sports International agents are trained to negotiate the lowest airfares. But they do more than just that. Hotels, cars, vans, whatever you need, whether it's far in advance or at the last minute, All Sports International will get it done. You worry about yourself, they'll take care of the rest. Individual or group, business or pleasure, close or far away. The folks at All Sports International will do it all at the lowest possible cost to you. All Sports International in Yorktown Heights. Call 914-243-4590. All Sports International. They make sure the Gales get to all their road games. Having a party? Well, smart shoppers know the name Shannon Beverages of New Rochelle. Shannon proudly carries the largest selection of domestic imported and craft brewed beer in Westchester. All your favorite brands of soda and ice, too. Stock up now. Our discount prices can't be beat. Party balls. And for your convenience, quarter kegs and half kegs are always available. Remember, for discount beer and soda, all the top brands, domestic and imported, Shannon Beverages, just a quarter mile south of Iona at 437 North Avenue in New Rochelle. Call 632-1115. That's 632-1115. Shannon Beverages. We're back here, 7.56 remaining in this CIT game. Gales have opened up a 10-point lead behind perimeter shooting and good inside play. They lead Buffalo. Iona does 59-49, just under eight minutes to go. And, Gary, you have an update. The final, East Tennessee State advancing to the semifinals. Lots of free throws, obviously, in those final 40 seconds. They end up beating Ohio by 11, 83-72. It will likely be at East Tennessee State. Although nothing official yet for the winner of this game, Iona or Buffalo. Right now, Iona leading by 10. Alston on the line for two. He just missed the front end of a one and one. That shot is up and no good. So Buffalo reverting a little bit now in the second half to their free throw woes at Western Michigan when they went 7 to 23. This is not the time to be missing free throws down by 10. Second one by Alston on the way. That is good. Austin with four, and it's a nine-point Iona lead. After that timeout, Iona remains the same with Pelcher, who is playing better and better. Pelcher on the high post. Machado, Jenkins, Glover, and Dwight. Machado to Jenkins. Middle Machado. Right side, Dwight. Drives. Little pull-up, float short. 
Rebound by Dwight underneath the basket, gets it out with a new shot clock for Iona. So he followed up his own miss. Seven and a half to go, Iona by nine. Jenkins for three, good! And Jenkins with 20, including five three-pointers. Gales have 10 three-pointers and a 12-point lead. He has hit some daggers here in the second half. Gales in the zone with Glover at the top. 62-50. Iona by nine, Jenkins for three, good! And Jenkins with 20, including five three pointers. And we'll get to the free by Glover. Machado puts it on the floor. Left side, Dwight. Iona by nine, Jenkins for three! Iona plays this matchup zone because of Glover's length at the top of the key. Gets his arms up there and it makes it really tough for the reversal passes by the guards on the perimeter. Now McCray, the one knock against the freshman, and he's great. Not a great free throw shooter, and that one is no good. And most freshman post players are, no matter what league. It's that way even when you look at the Big East. But Bills in back to the bench for Buffalo, and Gerard Oldham back in. Gales with a 12-point lead, 7.08 to go. Second by McCray, good. Made one of two. McCray with 25 points. Quite a night. About to hit the seven-minute mark, 62-51. Iona playing a little clock now. Rashawn Dwight in front of the Iona bench, further right to Jenkins. Now to Glover up top, left of the key now to Machado. Middle, Jenkins, very tempted with the night he's had. 15 on the clock, Machado faking right, going left. Kick out Jenkins, another three is no good. Rebound by Pelcher, puts it on the floor, the little baby hook, no. And Oldham got the rebound, he might have been better off to bring it back outside. Buffalo ball deflected up in the air. Machado and picked up by Glover. Lead pass to Rashawn Dwight, and he gets fouled from behind. Dwight to the line with Iona leading by 11. Good wherewithal by Glover that time to hit head on the pass and seeing Dwight beating the defense ahead of the field. Rashawn Dwight, Iona's best free throw shooter, 78% on the line. With the left hand, free throw, good. Just barely over made it to front rim. Five for Dwight. Five team fouls. Aram Nuyeri Unk cut call for the foul for Buffalo. Pelcher out of the game. Aleo Rodriguez back in as Dwight makes the second free throw. And Iona extends to a 13-point lead. Buffalo's going to attempt this run with Phils and on the bench, down 13. Oldham along the right side. New Ariunk, top of the arc, guarded by Dwight. Goes to Oldham. Back in the middle to Alston. 20 on the clock. Jenkins a near steal. Now Jenkins got it. Lead pass to White. One man back to White's pass deflected as he tried an alley oop for Glover, I believe. And it was deflected, and Buffalo gets the ball right back. Six minutes to go. Mulkey across the midcourt line. Buffalo taking their time. No urgency. They're down by 13. That's a lot. Reggie Witherspoon off the bench, takes time out. Buffalo with two left, with 5.52 to go, and Iona leading 64-51. to 51. And what Buffalo needs to do here is they need to try to get themselves back into this basketball game. They just can't get into a rhythm, Gary, on either end of the floor. Iona, they can't put two or three defensive stops together because of Iona's offense right now, and they Reggie Witherspoon cannot find the right combination to put points up on the board these last few minutes. Buffalo with two timeouts, Iona with four. Team fouls, Buffalo's got some to give. They got five, Iona with eight fouls in this half. Gales led by Jamel Jenkins lighting them up. When he shoots, and when he's on, he's deadly, 20 points. The star of this game has been Javon McRae, the freshman for Buffalo with 25. Mulkey will inbound from the side court, 19 on the shot clock. It goes to Oldham, now back in the hands of Mulkey. 15 on the clock. Oldham along the right sideline, back in the middle. New Ariunk with 10 on the clock. Mulkey in front of the bench. Mulkey with five on the clock. Oldham, New Ariunk with four. Time for one more pass, or do they? The righty hook, no good. Rebound tipped up in the air. McCray gets it back, and now an uncontested lay-in by Buffalo's New Ariunk. Set up by McCray. McCray's just a terrific all-around basketball player. That time, the offensive rebound and gorgeous interior pass. Iona by 11. 
Machado across the midcourt line for the Gales, nearing the five-minute mark. Glover, pass in the corner, Dwight, back up top, Machado. Left of the key, Jenkins, three, good! Oh, Jenkins with 23, and he's got seven three-pointers and a two-point goal. And I own a lead. Left of the key, Jenkins, three, good! Oh, Jenkins with 67-53, Jamel Jenkins just lighting him up. That's been the difference in this game. Gales trying to get to the semifinals against East Tennessee State. Mulkey with the ball in front of the bench. Ball fake. Back in the middle, Oldham. 13 on the clock. Down low, then back out to Mulkey. Had to go back to catch the pass. Underneath McCray on Glover. Righty hook. Two more for McCray. But it took him nearly a full shot clock to get those two points. And Iona by 12. Tell you, this kid might have 30 tonight. 67-55, Gales again playing to the extent of the shot clock. As we're down to 4, 10 to go. 12-point Iona Lee. Dwight goes to Machado. Machado returned to Dwight through the lane with the left hand off the backboard. No. Rebound by Glover, twisting and turning, and it's blocked by McCray from behind. On Glover. About the third time Glover has been blocked, Tim Close wanted a foul call. Now... They work it around in the corner. Buffalo, Oldham goes up top. Austin, left to the key, and again, using a lot of time. 18 on the shot clock, still a 12-point Iona lead. 3.35 to go in the game. Along the left sideline, new Ari Unk with nine on the clock. Now Mulkey finally fires a three, good for Buffalo to cut Iona's lead down to nine. Mulkey with four three-pointers, and it's 67 well, I think they called that a long two. Tim Kloos is having a conversation with the scorer, not the officials. Two, ten and point I, lead. Now they blow the whistle. And now Witherspoon wanted a question in, and now Wally Ruteki is going to go talk to the official scorer. This is not the media timeout. Whistled down by the officials. And now we get the media timeout as they discuss whether that last shot by Mulkey was a two or a three. Iona leads 67-58. It's a nine-point game according to the scoreboard with 3-11 to go. Back in a moment. Go like Iona goes. All Sports International in Yorktown Heights is more than just a travel agency. It's a full-service provider for all of your travel needs. Whether you are one, two, or a team, All Sports International agents are trained to negotiate the lowest airfares. But they do more than just that. Hotels, cars, vans, whatever you need, whether it's far in advance or at the last minute, All Sports International will get it done. You worry about yourself, they'll take care of the rest. Individual or group, business or pleasure, close or far away. The folks at All Sports International will do it all at the lowest possible cost to you. All Sports International in Yorktown Heights. Call 914-243-4590. All Sports International. They make sure the Gales get to all their road games. We're back here near Shell for the home stretch. Gales have given themselves a nice cushion, Gary, to move on to a game at Tennessee State this weekend. Iona leads Buffalo 67-58. Obviously, this one not over yet. Still 3-11 remaining. But the Gales have done a good job. They battled Glover's foul trouble in the first half with some very, very good perimeter shooting by their guards. Unfortunately for Reggie Witherspoon's Bulls, his main gun, Zach Filson, could not get going. But Javon McCray, which is a special, special performance tonight, the freshman with 27 on the block. And Jamel Jenkins with 23 for Iona. Seven three-point goals. Iona with 11 as a team. Buffalo has six. 3-11 to go. It's Iona ball leading by nine and 18 on the shot clock. Rashawn Dwight will be guarded by the freshman Aram Nueri Unk. Goes backwards to Machado in the backcourt and Scotty will bring up across the midcourt line. 12 on the shot clock, about to hit the three-minute mark, nine-point Iona lead. Machado outside, crossover dribble, penetrates, put it up, around and in by Machado, his second field goal, and Iona by 11. Under three minutes to play. Now, Brian Mulkey brings up along the right sideline, new Ari Unk. Looking for McCray, they keep it on the outside. Mulkey in front of the Buffalo bench. 
McCray coming out for the ball, top of the arc. Bounce pass to Alston, 18 on the clock. Two and a half to go. Iona by 11. Buffalo has to score virtually every possession, and the shot clock is down at 10. And they seem in no hurry. Now Mulkey left to the key. Goes to McCray with five. Time for one more pass. Newary Unk for three is short. Rebound, Rashawn Dwight for Iona. And the Gales, nearing the two-minute mark, will play some clock. And Machado needs to slow it down. Clock is on the Gales' side right now. Machado goes to Rashawn Dwight. About to hit the two-minute mark, exactly two minutes, 18 to shoot. Iona leads 69-58, looking for their first home postseason win in ages. Machado, crossover dribble, draws the foul. And to Buffalo's disadvantage here, that's only team foul number six, which will give Iona the ball and no free throws. Machado's so good at separating himself offensively from the defender. Such a good crossover, but that's where you see that upper body and that strength comes in. He could almost, as a little husky guard, barrel himself to the front of the rim. Buffalo's got to start fouling. Trinity Fields in replacing Aleo Rodriguez as Tim Clue senses that. It looks like they're going to just play it out, Gary. If you're down by 11 and you're down to a minute 40, how could you let Iona play out the clock here? I don't understand it. Oh, now he's giving him the signal to foul. And Dwight doesn't get fouled by McCray. Precious seconds ticking off, 15 on the shot clock. Now you might as well play it out. Minute 25 to go in the game. Iona playing keep away, 10 on the clock. Machado finally fouled with eight on the clock. So they allowed Iona to kill nearly the entire shot clock and then foul Machado, who will get a one and one. Oh, you said it right, and that's why Witherspoon was going crazy on the sidelines. At that point, it's eight seconds left on the shot clock. Just play it out, see if you could get the stop and the defensive rebound and the quick score at the other end. Machado, one or two from the line tonight. Eight assists for Machado, but only three, five points. Big one and one, Iona trying to sew this one up, up by 11. Machado rolling the ball with the right hand shot, good. And Iona with a 12 point lead. Looking to go on to the semis against East Tennessee State. Santa Clara, San Francisco, the late game tonight, as that is the Western quarterfinal. SMU advanced last night. Machado's free throw around and home. And it looks like Iona will advance. As we're down to a minute 20 to go, 71-58 Iona. Mulkey along the left, he's a senior. Austin along the right sideline in the hands of Oldham. Penetrates on Rodriguez off the glass, no. And it's gonna be an offensive goal. Tend as McCray touched the ball while it was in the cylinder. And it looks over for Buffalo. Gales get it back with 109 to go and a timeout taken by the Buffalo bench. After the offensive goaltending call, by Jervon McCray. And it was tough because that was more not about him getting his hand involved on the cylinder. The ball skipped off and took a, a tough bounce and a quick rim off. McCray was doing the right thing. He was attacking the rim with his hands high, looking for the offensive tip in, something that we've seen him do three or four times this game. Now, a couple of key stats in this game. Buffalo with 20 turnovers, Iona with only 12. Yeah, we said and it's it. amazing. Iona only averages 12 turnovers with the high tempo pace of the game that Tim Close uses. Gales have kept very good care of the basketball all year. That's right. And we said at the half that Buffalo was on pace to have 24 turnovers. Uh, you said they have 20 already. And Tim Close, seven turnovers in the first half. He's done, done a phenomenal jo job, especially the guards taking care of it in the second half. Iona ball with a 13 point lead up ahead to Glover. Glover into the forecourt. Now Iona takes timeout. Tim Close with timeouts to burn. Just wants to talk this over. A couple of more seconds tick off the clock. 107 to go. And I truly do wonder if Buffalo has thrown in the towel here at this point and will not foul. I think it depends. Yeah, it will be interesting. 13 minutes, Cup, seven. A couple of question marks that I had in my mind. Now you got to make the shots. But Buffalo down by 11, 12 with about five minutes to go. They were taking nearly the full shot clock to set up an opportunity. And you didn't really and see them apply see, any type of didn't see any urgency on their part. pressure to get right to speed Ion up to try to get back into the game. 
the great Hubie Brown always said, you know, regardless of what your philosophy is, you better have a come from behind type game plan. And without Javon McCray and having just a super game, 27 points, a lot of the Buffalo big guns held silent by Iona. Now Dwight inbounds Machado and Machado fouled immediately. So Buffalo will be using strategy, trying to put Iona to the line. Nine team fouls against Buffalo, so the final one and one for Scott Machado. Aram Nueri Unk commits his second foul. Machado just made a pair, seven points, three of four from the line. 107 to go. Had a good crowd here at Iona, some of them leaving as Machado adds another point for the Gales. And Iona leads 72 58. Second one by Machado, money. So Iona salting the game away with free throws. Largest lead now 15, one minute to go. McCray underhand scoop over Rodriguez. Good, he's got 29 points. And now the final Buffalo timeout with the Bulls still down 73 to 60 and 59.8 seconds to go. Reggie Witherspoon going for the. Reggie Miller type comeback right here. Down double digits under a minute. Going to see them pick up full court pressure defense. Try to get a quick steal and try to get a quick score. Obviously, if you're Ione, you got to have good press offense here out of the timeout. Ball fake, snap your passes, and be strong with the basketball when you catch it. Javon McCray, in my opinion, of all the opponents Iona has faced this season, that, this I is the biggest individual game that I've seen. Absolutely. As good as any of them rank them right up there with Kevin Anderson from Richmond, Norris Cole from Cleveland State. Uh, who else would you say? Obviously Syracuse speaks for itself. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about one individual performance. Performances performance yeah. Oh, he was terrific. And as a freshman, I mean, you wonder why he's not started. I'd play that kid 38 minutes a night. I mean, he only averaged 11.7 coming off the bench, 11.4 rather. Guaranteed he will be starting next year. Uh, no question. Let's see, he has had virtually half of his team points. They've got 60, he's got 29. No timeouts for Reggie Witherspoon as their season slipping away and Iona looking to go on. Dales with a 13 point lead. And what? Buffalo will foul again. Gales have, with the exception of Glover, nothing but great free throw shooters in the game. Rashawn Dwight goes along the baseline to Machado. Machado, lead pass, catch by Dwight, and Dwight lays it in. See the one-handed catch and dribble that time by Dwight on the break. That was a football pass. Pass, catch by Dwight, and Dwight lays it in. Mulkey on Machado on the left lane. Mulkey has to hand off. Now Oldham goes up strong, hits the side of the backboard, no. But a foul against Iona. That stops the clock with 46 seconds to go. Ten team fouls against the Gales, but they have won this one, 75 to 60. I tell you, just saw some X and Owen by Tim Kloos. That last full court pass, Gary, he, he drew up a little offensive action there. He looked like Bill Walsh from the San Francisco 49ers. And Buffalo, you would think, wanted to foul. They just got beaten on a long pass by Machado, taken in flight by Rashawn Dwight. Uh, and now Javon James in, and Michael Glover sits down. His night is done. Limited tonight because of foul difficulty. Eight points for Glove. One more free throw upcoming for Oldham. It's on the way and good. First point for Jared Oldham. 75 61, 45 seconds to go. Turnover by Iona. Now here's Oldham driving on to White, high off the glass and up and over the backboards and out of bounds. So the Gales with a turnover, but Buffalo cannot capitalize. Now Reggie Witherspoon says that ball deflected by a Gale player before it up and climbed over the backboard. Refs spying none of that. Iona inbounds, Trinity Fields up ahead, Javon James. James, a bounce pass by Machado, saving on the end line. Gale's making a little bit harder than they have to on themselves. Buffalo trying to foul, and now Dwight fouled with 27 seconds to go. Austin picks up his fourth foul. And Rashawn Dwight trying to get the double digits. Jenkins leading Iona, 
seven three-pointers. Sean Oman did his damage in the first half with 11. Now Machado leaves, Jenkins leaves, gets a big ovation from the crowd as Randy DeZubri and Armand back in. Tim Close emptying the bench. Dwight's free throw is good. Three of three from the line. Iona by 15. Chris Pelcher about to check in as Dwight with two free throws, so he gets to 10. And it's 77-61 Iona. Now Dwight sits down. This may or may not be his final game in this building, the senior. We thought senior day was against Fairfield, but the Gales will live on. Now, Nuriaki, the shot no good, tipped around. Trinity Fields gets it. Will Buffalo foul? He goes cross court to Zuvere. 15 seconds to go. DeZuvre finally fouled. Is Buffalo not giving up now when they're down by 16 points? Yeah, if you're down by 16 with 15 seconds to go. I mean, Iona was very happy just to waste out the clock, but Buffalo fouls him. So this will turn out to be a blowout on paper, and it really wasn't for most of the game. Gales shooting 86% from the free throw line tonight. Randy DeZuvre on the line, 54% shooter, and that one no good off the rim. So it'll be Iona against East Tennessee State either Friday or Saturday. We don't know where yet. We suspect it'll be on the road, but we should be told shortly. Second one by DeZuvre, good. 17-point lead, 14 seconds to go. Mulkey playing his final game as a Buffalo Bull. The float in the lane, no good. Rebound put home by Austin. Seven seconds to go. Armand now fouled with six seconds to go. Why is I Buffalo know. fouling here in a 15-point game? With six seconds to go. I mean, 15. I it's mean, just going to make the score look worse on their part. That's right. I was going to say, self selfishly, if I'm Witherspoon, I don't want it to look like a 20-point loss on the ticker tonight. 78-63, and Sean Armand gets to the free throw line. So we can't figure out some of the strategy by Buffalo. Well, Before it really we were saying they were too conservative, now they're too aggressive. Yeah, but you made a good point. It, it really wasn't. They, they battled, they hung in here in a night where a lot of their top guys had cold shooting. But behind uh, McCray, they really did stay in this basketball game, but it's not going to look it because of these final couple of minutes when people look at the score. Coming out is Alston. He's a senior, and you know what this probably was for the few fans down from Buffalo. This did enable Austin and Mulkey to get out of the game as seniors and just get one more ovation hugs from their teammates. Right. It just so maybe that was the... Well, I think everyone was expecting that at the 30, 40 second right. whistle. First one by Armand, no good. Sean's second free throw on the way around, no. Fell off, five seconds to go. Fields almost with an Iona foul. Now Barnett, right angle, three, no, game over. And Iona advances. The Gales a solid 78-63 to 63 win over the University of Buffalo. Iona now.